Hello all and welcome, and I'm the Realist Philosopher, and this is the Realist Den, where it's 100% raw, 100% real, 100% of the time, baby! hoo So how y'all doing today? Hope you're all doing good, fine, and well. I'm doing all right, but I'm uh, slightly disturbed, more than slightly disturbed, actually, because uh, this broad, who looks like Johnny Depp from Willy Wonka, and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> a very, very bad version of that character, Theresa May, the Prime Minister of Britain, thinks it's a good idea to allow pedophiles to adopt children. What's the world coming to, huh? What's the world coming to? So claims blocking adoption for child abusers is a breach of their human rights, says Theresa. Is that so? <laughs> okay. So, with Theresa May on shaky ground as the current conservative leader and prime minister uh, of Britain, details of an executive order she made that would give more rights to child abusers has come to light. May had ordered a review of current legislation that would prevent pedophiles from adopting children claiming that it was a breach of their human rights. Okay, so let's get something straight here. First of all, neither you, nor I, nor anybody else has the right to anything. There's no such thing as positive entitled rights, meaning that just because you breathe, just because I exist, does not mean in any way, shape, or form that you're entitled to shit, okay? You don't have a right to health care or food or housing just because you're breathing, just because you're alive, okay? These kind of things have to be thought, fought for. They have to be earned. They are not just things you automatically receive. I know that people tell you this, okay, because they want to have a pretext to give you free shit so that you'll then vote for them, right? But the truth of the matter is you are not entitled to jack shit including the right to adopt human beings, especially if you're a pedophile who likes to bang them in the ass, okay? This is really disturbing stuff here. What is this lady thinking, okay? A breach of their human rights? Come on here. So the order spurred on by the late Helen Reese who was a reader in family law at the London School of Economics, who supported the then Home Secretary's policy on relaxing the law for child rapists because they have the right to build a family unit just like everybody else. Okay, first of all, let's get something straight here. Child rapists, pedophiles in general, they're scum, okay? In my opinion, they should be castrated, all right? Then... Even then, they shouldn't be allowed to have kids, okay? Because they'll do other sick things to get off, all right? So, no, these people should not be allowed to have kids, all right? Look, uh, this is not like other types of crimes, right? Sex crimes are highly pathological. These people do not change. They have one of the highest recidivism rates out there, if not the highest, okay? Especially child rapists. These people don't change. And let me tell you something. In general, people don't change, all right? Yeah, there's exceptions to every rule, but as a rule, people do not change. So if you take somebody who's been in jail for 15 years for raping a five-year-old kid, my God, that's a sick individual, okay? The level of depravity when we're talking about sex crimes is higher than, say, oh, I don't know, beating up some old pensioner and stealing his check, okay? And stealing his pension check, all right? That's a little different, okay? That's something that somebody might be able to change. That kind of behavior might be able to be altered, okay? But sex crimes, no. No, 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 okay? And these people should not be allowed around kids. So build a family, right? Okay. Again, if they were castrated, they wouldn't be able to build families. And they shouldn't have the right to build families, okay? Look, there's some things in Western society, in society in general, that we as human beings value. We as human beings value more than anything else. And one of those things is our children, okay? There's a difference, and granted, 
it's horrible, it's evil to be violent toward other people, it's horrible to rape, it's horrible to murder, it's horrible to do violence against your fellow human beings. But at the very least, at least when you're doing violence against an adult, that's an adult. They have the possibility of fighting back. Children are 100% completely unable to defend themselves in most cases. They are innocent. They have no ability to stand up for themselves. They have no voice. They are the weakest among us. So we need to make special allowances that go above and beyond what we would normally do when dealing with crimes of an adult victimizing another adult, okay? We need to protect the well-being of our children because they will be the leaders of the future. They will be the people who produce, who maintain our society, our countries in the future, all right? And the thing that affects their well-being the most in a negative way is crimes done to them as children. So, you know, you're going to tell me these people have, quote-unquote, rights. Well, to hell with their rights when it comes to getting to have children. They forfeited those rights when they raped some kid. Okay? So one of May's arguments for the change in policy was that although pedophilia is on the rise, <laughs> uh, so that's a problem, right? Pedophilia is increasing, not decreasing, right? Because Western society is becoming deconstructed. Things that were seen as taboo or evil or wrong the stigma is being removed from these things right in the ever continuing effort by the left to make everything relative and subjective and open to interpretation things that have been long understood to be inherently evil now people are like eh, well you know everything's open to interpretation everything's relative we gotta look at things on a case-by-case -case basis you know sex with kids Adults having sex with kids, man, that's not always bad. Maybe there's a certain situation. We have to be more open-minded, right? Bleeding heart liberal morons. So one of May's arguments for the change in policy was that although pedophilia is on the rise, the number of pedophiles that murder children is still quite low. What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm confused here. So her argument for letting pedophiles and child rapists, which are also pedophiles, they're all pedophiles, right? Yeah, pedophiles, rapists, they rape children, yeah. Of course, not all pedophiles get to that point. Some are just gropers and weird shit like that. But, you know, they're all pedophiles. But uh, what's her reasoning here? So because the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen is happening less, it's perfectly okay to let these people have kids even though the second worst thing that could possibly happen, which is the kid getting raped, well, that's on the rise. This is some very unusual logic she's employing here, if you could call it that. <laughs> Warped logic. Speaking about the proposed change, leading legal academic Reese said that blocking sex offenders from working with children was also unfair. You want to know what's unfair? Some poor little kid, five, six-year-old kid, happened to be exposed to some sick, degenerate child rapist who may or may not sodomize them. I think that's unfair. She also stated that rape victims should no longer be granted anonymity in trials against sex offenders as it gives defenders a disadvantage. Really? Well, boo did it fucking hoo 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 for them! As well as banning certain offenders, the law currently requires adults coming into regular contact with children other than their own to be screened. I don't have a problem with this. Them talking about this makes it look like they have a problem with that, too. So that's heavy-handed, too. Oh, well, they, they get out of jail. Let's just stop monitoring them at all. We know that these people have a high recidivism rate. But, but let's not keep track of them. Let, let's act like sex crimes are the same as some dude knocking over a liquor store. Yeah, that's totally the same, right? Once they've served their sentence, they should just be let go. They did their time for their crime. Now let's just leave them alone and not ever, ever, ever check in with them or monitor them at all. In her article, Miss Reese suggested that the review should also introduce an assumption. You've got to be real careful with assumptions, right? They tend to make asses out of you and me, more you than anybody else, that sex offenders, including child abusers, posed no threat once they had served their sentence. 
Where does this assumption come from exactly? Because the science on this is very clear. And it says the exact opposite. What is this pie in the sky bullshit, right? Trying to equate sex crimes with, you know, a robbery or an assault of a non-sexual nature. They're very, very different crimes with very, very different recidivism rates. And by the way, the recidivism rate for non-sexual crimes is also very high. <sighs> Why, why, why do we need to have this assumption? Why do you want to introduce an assumption that sex offenders abusing children are no more of a threat than anybody else who's committed a non-sexual crime once they're released? People who, by the way, again, have very high recidivism rates. <gasps> you know why this is? Because the left wants to normalize sexual activity with children. All these people are deviants. They're all a bunch of relativistic deviants, right? And they want to be relativistic so that everything's allowed, right? Nothing's off limits. So Miss Reese went on to say, there's no reason why all sex offenders should not be considered as potentially suitable to adopt or foster children or work with them. Is there some shortage of people out there that can't have kids who want kids? I mean, the last time I looked, there's plenty of people, normal people who are not people who have been convicted of sex crimes who want to adopt kids. Why do we need to make these sickos, these degenerate nut jobs that you want to label as perfectly normal? It's perfectly normal to have sex with children. Hell, we shouldn't even send them to jail when they do, right? So it goes on to say, the vetting and barring scheme and other legislative measures single out sex offenders for unfair special treatment. And they destroy the principle that a prisoner pays his or her debt by serving their sentence before re-entering society on equal terms. <laughs> There's that term equal again. They, they love equality, even if and when it harms people, which, is, by the way, it always does, right? Because the only way to achieve equality is to, you know, do it at the point of a gun, right? By force, by coercion. <laughs> oh, sure! They, they, they serve their time, right? They're no more a threat to anybody. It's not like the crime that they committed was any worse than this dude, right? He knocked over a liquor store at knife point. This guy banged the three-year-old baby in the tuckus. Oh, well, they're, they're equivalent. Oh, man. Uh, individuals are placed on the barred list and banned from working with youngsters or vulnerable adults if they're convicted of a sexual or violent offense or one involving the mistreatment of children, which is absolutely positively as it should be. Because we know in reality that these people have the highest recidivism rate of all criminals, and it's up to us to protect our children because they can't protect themselves. Which is, by the way, why these extra protections are in place. So it goes on to say that Miss Reese criticized the rules for leading all sexual offenders to be tarred with the same brush. Well, yeah, the brush of a sexual offender. I don't understand that. What, what does that mean? What, what is this? What do you mean tar with the same brush? They were all sexual offenders, right? What brush am I supposed to tar them with? Saying that while careful screening was important, the issuing of a blanket ban violated the rights of criminals who wanted to adopt or work with young people. And why do you think they want to work with young people? <laughs> why, why do you think... This small segment of the population who just can't control their pathological urges want to work with young people. You think some pedophile that raped some five-year-old gets out of jail after 15 years, and just all of a sudden, he's changed dramatically, but he still wants to work with kids, but not because he's attracted to them. Oh, no. Come on. Get a brain, lady. Thankfully, however, some people have more common sense than this Miss Reese, and Theresa May, the current prime minister. A home office spokesperson said, it's safe to say that the vetting review will not be considering allowing pedophiles to adopt. It wouldn't exactly go down well with the public. You think? <laughs> you think? I'll tell you what, if I was some woman and I was considering an abortion or letting my kids get adopted by somebody, that I, and I had no control over who adopted these kids or I wouldn't be able to know their background or history, like say they'd committed some kind of sex crime. And the state, if we went by Miss Reese's and Theresa May's arguments, would hide this knowledge from me because it would be unfair to discriminate against these people since they served their time. Well, 
what would I be more likely to do then? Just get an abortion outright or carry the kid to term and let it be adopted by somebody who may or may not be a child molester slash rapist. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what I would do. So not only are these two Marxian social deconstructivist pinheads trying to push a ridiculous policy of equality in terms of how all criminals are represented after they've served their time. I think there's also part of this that is trying to encourage women to get abortions, which the left just <laughs> loves. Let's depopulate people, at least white people anyway. So what do you think of Miss Wonka here? Should uh, this pale-faced woman who may or may not be the owner of a chocolate factory. <laughs> Get her way. Should pedophiles be allowed to adopt children? Or should they be castrated once they're found out? Let me know in the comments section, and please like and subscribe. And please check out my podcast, which is far more raw, real, and red-pilled than this material that I place on YouTube. It's so raw and so real that if I put it on YouTube, my channel would be banned immediately. So you might want to check that out. And please donate to my Patreon. If you feel so inclined, I get no money from YouTube whatsoever. Not like I get these videos monetized. They're far too uh, non-PC. I have a once a month Patreon and a per podcast Patreon. The once a month is obviously donate whatever you feel comfortable with once a month. And the per podcast Patreon is exactly as it sounds. I make two podcasts a week. You would donate 50 cents or a buck and then you would be charged for each podcast. And you can put a cap on that. So if you only want to donate six bucks, but I make $8 worth of podcasts that month, which I do every month. If you were to donate $1 per podcast, you would only be charged for six. So you can absolutely control how much you donate. And you can also view those podcasts for free on SoundCloud. And all the relevant links are in the description of this video, including my Twitter and Facebook, where I post links to every single new video that I make. And that's it. I am the realist philosopher, and I wish you a good day. Take care.